Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zadai with you. Welcome to the next session, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. session of Holy Fire. I'm telling you what, after laying the foundation last night, and I, I feel like the Spirit of God is ready to go on, and I know that you are too. Just remember one thing, that the demons do not want you to overcome rejection. They do not want you to get free to where you're not just going through a breakthrough all the time that you're going into overthrow see that the lord wants you in overthrow and the and the devil the devil wants to keep you in a small place these demons that are disembodied from the flood they're all around us and they're trying their best to keep humanity uh, out of the will of god out of salvation so that they can drag them to hell and then those who are christians the demons can't drag a Christian to hell, but they can sure keep people like like uh, you and I from being effective. So the demons want you to be ineffective as a Christian. And so I was sent back to help the body of Christ, to, to help uh, those who are seeking after God. And I'm going to tell all the dirty secrets on the devil. And this is the big one. It's, re it's the rejection thing. God doesn't want you just to be going through breakthrough to where you get a breakthrough and then you got, you know, things go well for a little while and then something else happens. He wants you in overthrow. It's a whole nother step above and beyond what you've ever encountered in breakthrough. It's overthrow. Now, here's the thing. You are already accepted in the beloved through Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus has perfected the whole thing with you with god it's already taking care of everything your position with him is is absolutely immaculate you are as holy as you're going to be you're as righteous as you're going to be positionally that is not the question here this is what's going on right now with you it's the relationship do you really really have the relationship you want with god and the, the the fact of it is is that we can all get closer to god we can all walk in more knowledge than we ever have before we can we can see and hear in the spirit and the lord wants to take us there this is what i saw when i was on the other side though is that because we had fallen and jesus christ restored us spiritually we are still limited even though we shouldn't be we shouldn't be as limited as we are as christians so it, it has to do with denying the flesh it has to do with submitting to god resisting the devil it has to do with yielding to the spirit and walking in the spirit that is the absolute truth i know that so that's why the lord told me to have this this seminar, this conference, this spirit school this weekend is to tell all the dirty secrets on the devil and to see God's people set free this weekend. And so here we are at Saturday morning, and I want to talk to you a little bit about position versus relationship. And what I mean by this is that, you know, we have a position and I had a position at Southwest Airlines and at that at, for 30 years, I just submitted to authority i did what i was told but then i was uh, i was in authority so people had to listen to what i had to say but i also listened to what others uh, above me they made decisions and i had to follow through with them okay my position with southwest airlines was that i was submitted to their their authority i was submitted to the government's authority and i carried out the will and the desire of the government and and southwest airlines and i implemented whatever it was that they wanted into the public and so that i could uh, you know help the people to get from point a to point b as comfortable and as satisfied as was possible okay with that being said i did not have the relationship with my company that that um i had with my family and with my friends so it was more of just impersonal. I just did my job and I went home. Now I had a lot of friends at Southwest Airlines and I met a lot of customers too as well. But for the, for the most part, I had a position with Southwest Airlines. Now that position gave me certain privileges because of the, the fact that I was qualified to do certain things and I had access that maybe you, you wouldn't have access to because you weren't um, in that position that I was in with that employment. Okay. That being said, that the, um, the CEO and the president 
of Southwest Airlines, they didn't call me every night and ask me how I was doing. You know, my supervisor didn't call and ask me how I was doing. Um, the only person that really cared about how I was doing was my wife and uh, a select group of friends and God himself. You know, those are the only, the only people that really uh, had concern about me on, a, on an intimate, personal matter. So I had a position with Southwest Airlines, but I didn't have the intimate relationship with the individuals that were in charge. I just did my job. So they didn't check up on me, you know, but um, relationship wise, my wife checked up on me, my friends checked up on me, the Holy Spirit checked up on me, my angels, you know, every, everybody that was close to me, all the, all the personal, uh, relationships, they, they checked up on me and kept me. My angels kept me, uh, you know, my friends, they, they, uh, they were concerned about me. They, if they heard something happening, they would, they want to know if I was on that airplane or, you know, the weather or whatever. Uh, so I can get further with relationship than I can with position because see, position is just for certain things. So you can't, you can gain access to buildings and airplanes that I had access to because you weren't an employee and you didn't have a government badge. You didn't have uh, authorized access. OK, but did you know that if you were with me, I could get you in and I could take you places and show you things that you would never be able to get into yourself unless you went through the qualification process and had access through employment? OK. So that is the way it is with God. God gives you positional uh, privileges through Jesus Christ. So Jesus came, he died for your sins, he suffered and died. He gave you the, that position of being holy uh, through the blood. He gave you righteousness through the blood. So you have a robe of righteousness now as a believer in, in Jesus Christ. You, you are as righteous as you're ever gonna be in the sight of God the Father. Uh, you've been restored back to the way it was before man fell. Okay, the same with holiness. Uh, these these things are positional. They have to do with the blood of Jesus getting you into the holy of holies. Okay, now, however, there is a relational side of God as well. There were certain individuals in the Bible that I was always attracted to, and I, I would do a word study, and I found out any time that anybody was mentioned as being a friend of God. So in the Old Testament, we talk about uh, children of Israel, they were servants. So then there's this idea of slaves and how you had bond servants, where there were servants that, that, uh, that, that were with people that were hired um, or bought, and they, they stayed with their owner. Then if you wanna be a bond servant, in other words, at a certain time, you could be released from the commitment but if you chose to stay, if you wanted to be with your master as a slave, you could become a bond servant, which meant that they, they pierced your ear um, on a doorpost or a door, and then you became a bond servant. Okay, so that was an extra added thing. And that was all in the Old Testament. And then, you know, at the time of Jesus, when he was on the earth and Paul, they had these, these kind of uh, things going on culturally in, in their culture. Okay. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Okay, so putting us in the same classification as some of the individuals like Moses and David, Abraham, they were just a few, Enoch, they were friends of God. And these, these people were set apart by God saying that they were special. Now, God uh, doesn't play favorites as far as positionally goes, because the blood of Jesus is, is very powerful and effective uh, to, to gain us access to God. However, relationally, in a relationship, there are those who have more favor because of their, their uh, commitment and, and their faith. They were mentioned like Enoch and David and Abraham and Moses. They were all mentioned as having faith that caused their relationship with God to be on a higher level. There is favoritism when it comes to the relational side of it, because we see that in Scripture. However, we don't see that positionally. Everybody that has been bought by the blood of Jesus is on the same level. So all Christians have a positional place with God that is, is, is not um, 
in any way showing favoritism. It's just that God has bought back humanity through Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's okay there. But Enoch, he walked with God. He pleased God so much that God just took him, it says, because he pleased God so much. Same with Moses. Moses, at 120, God said, it's time for you to go. And he fell before the Lord and went on to heaven. It was the same, the same with Abraham. He pleased God because of his faith. And King David, he, he, he wanted to serve God with all his heart, even though he did things wrong, just like they all did. And like we all do, he was a friend of God. He pleased God and he was known as a friend of God. Okay. I want to talk about that here because in John 15, it, like I mentioned, Jesus talks about servants and talking about masters. And then he says in, in verse 15, he says, no longer do I call you servants for a servant does not know his, what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. Now, did you hear what he just said? He said, all things that he's heard, he's made it known unto you. That is an amazing statement. See, you don't get that as being a servant or a slave, you know, a helper along the house or among the household. You know, you're cleaning, you're, you know, as a servant, you're, you're preparing food, whatever you're doing, but you're not included in on everything that the family's doing. You're just there to serve. Now Jesus is saying because of what he's doing, because he came, he's, he's telling the disciples in John 15 that this things have just changed. He said, now, he said, you're friends. Well, that is relationship to me. So I wasn't a friend of the CEO and the, and the president of Southwest Airlines. I mean, I knew them and they knew me. I mean, we would recognize each other and we would talk and they, they were, they knew my name. They knew my face, but we didn't have a relationship where we were friends because, um, I had a position with Southwest Airlines and I just did my job. Okay. So think about that. That's how really a lot of, of people today think of their, re their relationship with God is, is based on an Old Testament type of, of idea, like a corporate culture type thing. Well, it's gotten into the church and it's just not right. Uh, when I met Jesus, he was all about relationship too, as well. So you can't throw out the position, but you can't throw out the relationship either. And I, I talk about this, um, this way. You know, there were different movements, um, throughout the, the different generations and the different ages of the church being developed. And we've had certain movements that, that emphasize certain things. And, you know, we've had the word of faith movement, which emphasized, uh, the position, the positional part of God and the positional part benefits that we have as a believer. However, you, you cannot forget that God is also um, a person that, that doesn't want to be manipulated. He doesn't need to be convinced to do something that he already wants to do. So I often talk about this and I, I just want to talk about it shortly with you that, that, that Jesus is coming back for a church that's without spot or wrinkle. That's what it says in Ephesians 5, 26 and 27. Okay. If that's the truth, then the blood of Jesus positionally should have taken care of that. So why does Paul say that? I'll tell you why, because there has to be manifestation as well. You, you can't just have faith without manifestation. You've got to believe, but then you've also got to, to, to see the manifestation of your faith. So that's why the book of James is a kind of a hard book. I mean, James was, was saying, listen, if you have faith, you know, show me your faith by what you do. So that, that's manifestation, right? Okay. If you have faith in your heart, Jesus said, if you have faith and you believe that you should speak, you should speak to your mountains and they're going to be removed. So it's not just enough to believe. You have to believe in your heart and then say with your mouth what you believe. And that's why Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. But you should say with your mouth, and that brings something that's inside of you, something that's spiritual, out into the physical realm, and it becomes audible. Then there are things that whatever it is that's holding back your provision, you're holding back your healing, whatever that is, it has to let go of your provision, it has to let go of your healing and let it come to you. And the, this is where the, the spiritual 
collides. It comes into this realm and it manifests. So there is a relational part that causes the manifestation. It's just not the positional. You know, you could, st- you could say something 500 times. God's going to, God's heard you your fr- the first time you said it. No relationship causes your faith to go to another level because you know God is a person who wants to do what you're asking. So because you're asking, you're not asking amiss, you're asking according to the word of God. And, uh, you know, pos- positionally, Jesus has done everything he's going to do for you. He's se- seated now at the right hand of God, waiting for his enemies to become his footstool. He's going to put his feet his heel on the head of his enemies through the church. The church is going to bring this about. All the people that are coming in, all the harvest of, of souls is going to come in and the devil is, is defeated. We're to enforce that victory. Jesus is not going to do another thing about the devil. So we have to change our mindsets so that we're just not servants. We're not just obedient servants. We are children. We're obedient children that are loved. We're imitators of God as dearly loved children. The blood of Jesus was effective in destroying the works of the devil. But now, relationally, we have to walk it out and enforce our position. But it is through a relationship. I don't tell God to do something he, he's already said he's going to do. I just thank him for it. It's a relationship. I just thank him. I tell people all the time, thank you for what you've done. And I appreciate everything that the, that the Lord is doing through you. I, it's a relationship. It's not a position. You know, I give, I give people credit when they obey God. I, I, I recognize them. I, I also recognize God when he does what he says he's going to do. And I thank him for because he is not going to be mocked. A man will reap what he sows. So if we sow towards eternal life, then that's what we're going to reap. If that's not happening, then we have to look at it being our problem or being a spiritual problem that we need to take care of because God has already done everything he's going to do about the devil. He is, he has defeated him. We're to enforce that. Okay. So, um, in, in this idea of knowing the difference between positional and relational, you have to realize that God is not a robot. He has not made you a robot. You have a free will. God has a free will. And we were made like him, so we can actually say no to God. We can do what God tells us, us to do, or we can say no. And it doesn't change. It doesn't change God just because we say no, but it does change history. If we say no to God, we're affecting a lot of people around us. See, I saw all this and I, I, I was at a loss when I was with, with Jesus and I, I didn't think I was coming back from the dead. So I was, uh, outside my body w- during an operation and I thought we were just going to go to heaven with me and Jesus were just going to go to the city. And I saw that, I, I saw that we, should have known more about the spirit realm than we do. We should have knew more about God, his personality than we do. And we should have known um, and understood ourselves more that we are spiritual beings in a body and we have a free will. So God has a free will. You have a free will. He wants to convince you of his goodness. See, the goodness of God leads us to repentance, according to the apostle Paul. So I don't need to be scared into going to hell in order to obey God. I can have a revelation of a loving father who wants to provide for me everything I could ever want or desire. And because of that, I serve God. I'm loyal to him. I honor him because he is a good God. He's a good father. And I love him. I have, see, that's relationship. That's not, that's not position. You know, I don't serve a king that I'm, I'm afraid of. I serve a king that I love and I'm a friend and I submit to him. I have the fear of the Lord and I honor him, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, a servant anymore. I am not a slave. I'm a, I'm a child of God. Do you get it? So th- this is, this is, uh, the shift, the mindset that has to happen. So you've got to, this morning, you've got to change your mindset in Matthew. 311 it says i indeed baptize you with water under repentance but he who is coming after me is mightier than i whose sandals i am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire so so here's the idea of the holy fire 
you know, you can just be uh, normal, uh, which is not really normal to, to God. To, to God's normal is 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 supernatural. So, uh, you know, we just want to be kind of like we don't want to make waves. I just want to be normal. Well, when you say that, what what are you measuring up that normal with? You know, are you is that a standard that's in the world? Because you can't use the world as your standard. You've got to use God and His Word and His Spirit as the standard. Well, God is on fire. He is holy. He is righteous. He is all these things as a person. This isn't just a position. It's a person. This person is going to baptize you with fire. Well, that fire is from the other realm. That's your new normal. I'm just being honest with you. Holy fire is your new normal. So are you ready for that? Because if you're trying to fit into the world, you know, you might as well just forget it because you, you're you never going to fit in. But you might as well just, if you're not going to fit in, you might as well just make it obvious. You might as well step out from among the world and be on fire. So Jesus came and he preached. He took over, just like we talked about last night. He, he, uh, Jesus took over what John was preaching. He preached on repentance and the people were coming. When John was preaching, he never had one miracle. He, he, his, his, his message was very simple. Repent. I mean, he, he was not flamboyant. He was not, uh, probably not charismatic. Like as far as, uh, he, he probably didn't have a great personality. It was, he was, he was dressed, you know, in, in animal skins and he's eating locusts and honey. Um, probably not, you know, the kind of person you want to be friends with, but his message was very strong too. He was telling people to turn from God, turn to God and, and be baptized. Okay. So no miracles. And yet when Jesus came, Jesus came preaching the same message, but then he also said, listen, I am going to baptize you with fire as well as the Holy Spirit. So we see that on the day of Pentecost, we see people. Uh, having flames on their head. We saw uh, that there was a mighty rushing wind. We saw they were speaking in other languages. We saw that they were acting drunk because Peter had to get up and apologize and say, these are not drunk, as you suppose. But the, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel, attributing to the fact that they looked drunk and were acting a certain way. He was attributing that to the Holy Spirit coming. And that the Holy Spirit was having that effect on them. But he used the word drunk as though they appeared to be drunk. And they weren't. They weren't on alcohol. They were drunk on the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now, now, now the Holy Spirit baptizes us with fire. He is doing, doing his work in us. One, the Holy Spirit is baptizing us. One of, a, one of that is the fulfillment of what was spoken by the prophet Joel. But Jesus also uses fire. So what is that fire? That fire is a cleansing fire. That fire ignites your spirit so that you can do supernatural things. When the fire of God is upon you, you can go further than you can in the natural. Now, the fire of God is on me right now. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm ministering on holy fire. Now, while I'm doing that, the Holy Spirit is also ministering through me. He's the one that is wanting to talk about this subject. God initiated this, and He told me to do this this weekend and to, to explain to the people why they're having the trouble they're having. It's because they need to understand how important fire is, holy fire is, and how important it is to understand what the devils know that they don't want you to know. And that is, is that, is that Christians will, will eventually walk in this holy fire and in the final move of God. And when they do, it will paralyze the devil. The, the devils know that. So they are trying to extend out the period of time that Christians stay rejected, that Christians st uh, keep the slave mentality, the servant mentality. Now, I'm not, uh, when I say um, servant, I'm not saying like, you know, that you don't serve people. You know, you're supposed to serve people. You're supposed to consider people better than yourselves. I'm not talking about the mindset of a servant that way. I'm talking about that Jesus said that we are now called friends, that we are children of God, like Paul said. Okay, so th the devil is screaming. 
over this message because he knows that he's going to be stopped from controlling you, from be, uh, uh, being able to suggest things that you'll consider. You won't even listen to him. It'll be so foreign to you because your mindset is changing. And that is because of the fire. The fire is igniting your, your spiritual senses so that you know what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. It's cleansing you. It's causing you to be separate from the world. And it causes that spirit of the world, which is the devil, according to Paul, uh, it, it, it prevents him from having the power over you. Bondages uh, are breaking. Uh, chains are falling off of you. You're, you're, you're starting to feel free right now. That is the Holy Spirit breaking the chains. That's the evil spirits leaving your proximity so that they can't function anymore. They, they can't handle you because you have been baptized in fire. So fire causes your relationship with God to go to a whole nother level. The blood causes your positional relationship with God to, to be what it should have been before the fall. So the fall in Adam and Eve is bought back and, and it's taken care of. You're, you're bought back. You restored to your original position like Adam and Eve were. That was the blood of Jesus. But this holy fire causes you to excel in relationship with God because you put the flesh under you, you, you allow your mind to be transformed and changed. You, you, the way you look at things changes and then you move upon this earth in power in the fire and that devils have have to leave they have to back off they have to listen to you this is because the anointing of the holy spirit breaks a yoke but then the fire is a cleansing fire the the fire causes demons to be paralyzed and i i saw this so this message needs to be preached that it's not just baptism in the holy spirit it's a baptism in fire as well and that i i need to tell christians that they're no longer servants, they're no longer slaves. And they're not just doing this out of obligation. You know, I can be obedient because I love my Heavenly Father. I don't have to do it because I'm afraid that I'm going to get punished or I'm going to miss out on something. You know, uh, you know, I, I've been taught many things that were wrong. And when I went to heaven, I saw, I talked to Jesus. I saw that the truth is there in the Bible, but, it, you know, you have to rely on the Holy Spirit heavily in order to explain these things to you. But you're going to get this. When you get to heaven, you're going to see all this. And boy, are you going to be surprised. I was. And I'm doing this on this weekend. I'm doing this so that you don't have to go through what I went through. You know, not only did I die and come back, but boy, I'll tell you what, what a reality check to see that I was only operating at a very small level of, of what I could have. My capabilities in the spirit, my, the benefits were available to me. And what, what I could have done for God was so much higher than what I had done. And I realized that it was my fault that I had not allowed the Holy Spirit to be my friend, that I was, was for, praying a lot. I was fasting a lot. I was working a lot. I was being very aggressive, but it was in the soul realm. It wasn't in the spirit realm like it should have been. I should have been more out of relationship with God. Uh, commanding those mountains to leave. I should have been loving people more. I should have been having more compassion. Um, you know, it, it just goes on and on and on. Um, and I don't want you to have to go through that. But when you get to heaven, there is a big, big chance that you, uh, if you didn't listen to what I'm saying, you are going to be um, feeling pretty, uh, pretty, pretty sad for a moment, like I did. That I could, I, this is what I told the Lord when, when I, the reality set in. I said, Lord, I could have done so much more for you. I just didn't grasp the, the truth. I didn't understand it. But it wasn't Jesus' fault. It was the fact that the Holy Spirit was there waiting for me to ask Him and to yield to Him. But I did not yield. I did not ask Him. I was not uh, diligent in spiritual things. Uh, I know you know what I'm talking about. I was dil diligent in the physical things and I was more concerned to tell you the truth about what people thought of me at times. And it wasn't healthy for me. It wasn't healthy because it, it, my relationship with God suffered. But holy fire, now that I know about holy fire, I know that now this will help cleanse the, the desires of the flesh, cause me to walk 
in an upright way, not just positionally, but relationally as well. Okay, so perhaps now that I've just told you that, what's going to happen to you when you pass away, you're going to stand before the Lord, you're going to be rewarded for everything that you you did. But at the same time, he, Jesus won't say anything to you, but you'll see that you could have done more and you'll see where you fell short. He's not going to say anything to you and he won't condemn you for it. It's just that there's a lot of people that suffered lack because you weren't obedient, because you weren't diligent. I'm just being honest with you. We're all connected to each other and you don't see how important you are in a generation until, you know, it's, it's, you're in heaven. But the Spirit of God can show you these things, and He showed me. He showed me how important I am for this generation and the generations to come. And that He, he showed me that I was an answer to a previous generation's prayers. That, that the, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is, is I'm answering prayers of people that are already in heaven, that prayed and fasted, that God would move on the earth, and that God would spare a generation. And so now I see that manifestation in my life of those prayers from previous uh, saints praying. Okay, so now you're going to start to see the shift because I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. So the demons right now, as I'm talking to you, are backing off. They're starting to, to just show themselves out because they're realizing that they're about to get a whooping. They're about to get whipped in the spirit. And so they start to back out. They don't want you to address them. So that's why you have to be rough with them. You have to drive devils out. So I'm hoping I'm being clear with you because the, the devils right now are backing out there. They're, they're wanting to get away because they know you're about to hear what, what will defeat them. You know, they're, they're, they don't want you to know these things. So this will, this shifting of perception, where you're not the victim anymore, you're not the slave anymore, you're you're not the servant, you're in relationship with God. He is a loving, kind, heavenly Father that wants to give you the desires of your heart, according to Scripture. So if you lack any good thing, your heavenly Father wants to give it to you. Anything that you need or lack, God wants to give it to you. Jesus said, listen, if you love me compassionately, if you love me to the point where you obey me. He said, you can ask whatever you will, and I, and I will give it. The Father will give it. In my name, he will give you the desires, anything you want. That's what it says in, in, in John 15. Okay, the, the church is going to be affected that you go to. If you're affected, then your family's going to be affected. Your church is going to be affected. Uh, your job is going to be affected. Everywhere you go will also start to respond. So there'll be a shift that happens inside of you. But once you go into overthrow because of the manifestation of the Spirit, it's going to start going outwardly, which means that some people are not going to like you anymore because you've gone into overthrow. The demons are going to freak out in people that they have entrenched. The demons have entrenched themselves in Christians. And, and I'm not saying they're possessed. I'm saying that they have uh, the, the demons have gotten access to certain parts, to where their thinking is wrong, their their emotions are wrong, uh, their perception is wrong. We all go through this. We all go through this type of deliverance. You know, you don't have to be a demon possessed to start to take on characteristics of a of a demonic spirit that is attacking you. Uh, you know, Apostle Paul was attacked by demons. Um, you know, you know, you have to resist the devil and he's going to flee from you, but you have to submit to God. The way you submit to God is you allow the spirit to baptize you in fire and you allow the word of God to have full, full force in your life, full influence in your life. To where the spirit can speak to you and say, we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way. We, we, um, the, the Trinity meets and writes books about people before they're even born. The Trinity has met and established your book already. Everything about God's will for, for your life is already written in heaven. Now, how much of that you do is really up to you. Did you know that? Because the Holy Spirit wants to tell you what the pages of your book say. Each one of our days was written in a book before one of them came to pass, according to Psalms 139.16. The angels come down, they, they are wanting to work in the pages of your book into your daily life. But 
as you can see, if it wasn't for the, this type of teaching, people wouldn't even know because the Bible clearly talks about all this stuff. But y you can see where the devil doesn't want the crucified life message or this message about position versus relationship. Um, you know, the last night I talked to you in, in great detail about Lucifer and Hallel and, and Satan and, de and the, how the demons work and um, essentially how they keep people in a, in a small place without revelation so that they perish. There's no vision. So that's not you. You're not backing off of this. You are progressing toward the high calling, whatever it is that God has for you. You've, you've taken hold of that, which Christ has taken hold of for you. You will not let go and you're not going to be denied. But if you allow yourself to be influenced in a relationship, not a, just position, you're going to change your, your environment, which is going to change your family. It's going to change where you work. It's going to change your neighborhood. It's going to affect your church. Your, and then it's going to affect your country. It's going to affect your city and your country. That's the bottom line. And you're going to be known in your country who you are because you allowed God to win you over through holy fire. Holy fire comes in and starts to expose all this. So I don't, don't uh, allow the devil to diminish the revelation that's coming to you right now because you are on fire with a flame from the other realm. You are on fire by the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit is baptizing you. And that baptism is causing a shift. So all these things are going to change your environment so that you are a history maker. You actually change the way things were going, you know, whatever way it was going, you are going to change that track and make it work out for the good to those who love God or called according to his purpose. So when, when you, when you want the best from God, you're going to get the best from God because he gives the best. He is a loving, kind, heavenly father. Jesus said that when, when you ask for bread, does he give you a stone? You mean, does your, your earthly father do that? No, he said, it's the same with your heavenly father. And he desires to give us the kingdom, Jesus said. Okay. So if, if, if you, if, if, if you understand that Jesus is in you, that the same Jesus that was walking the earth is now inside of you and that the same spirit that was on Jesus and in Jesus is now in you. And that the ministry that he did, Jesus said, those who believe will do the same ministry. Okay, if you believe all that, then the spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you, according to the Apostle Paul. So that the, the Holy Spirit is quickening us. He's quickening our mortal body and he's causing us. So he's not just on us, beside us. He's in us and he's working his perfect will out. If we yield to the Holy Fire, if we yield to the Spirit of God and allow all these barriers uh, to come down inside of us so that he can live and move and have his being inside of us, just like we move and live and have our being inside of him. He's in us. We're in him. And if we abide in him and he abides in us, you can ask what you desire and it, it's going to be done for us. That's why John John 15 talks about this and about the vine. Okay, so I'm, I'm not bound spiritually by the things that I am bound physically by. You know, like I, I, I was able to travel places in the spirit with, with my body. My body would not have allowed me to do that. But when I was out of my body, I was free. And when I came back into my body, then I'm in on this earth. But I have had supernatural things happen where I don't understand it, but the Spirit of God was able to take me beyond the, the limitations of my body in order to do whatever it was he was asking me to do. So Jesus can, can uh, multiply and cause you to excel above and beyond, but you've got to have a new normal. You've got to have a new way of looking at everything, and God's going to give you that mindset. And don't let Satan draw you away any longer. Let the Holy Spirit draw you into the ho holy place, into the secret place. And Satan wants to get you out in his arena in the world because he can beat you there. 
because he wants to weaken you. But if you don't listen to him, if you run to God, like David, King David ran to God. He spent time in the, in the tabernacle that he had made. Uh, Moses and Joshua, they spent uh, most of their time face down w- with God in the tabernacle or uh, Moses on the mountain. You know, God was, was winning Moses over. He won, he won Joshua over. And you, you got to let God do that to you right now. Just let the Holy Spirit work. And I feel the baptism of fire so strongly now. Okay, I wanted to talk to you a couple things. Uh, Jesus, Jesus came back to destroy the works of the devil. He came back and walked as a man. You know, he he was known as the Son of Man. When when the evil spirits would say, "I know who you are, the Son of God," he would tell them to shut up. He would not allow them to speak that. He wanted um, he wanted the people to see that he was sent from God as a Messiah to redeem humanity. So he came as a man in order to redeem men. So you can't let you can't let. Um, you know, the other people that say, well, you know, Jesus did all that stuff because he was a son of God. Well, see, you can't, you can't just say that because Jesus came back as, as to buy us back and to also show us how to walk out this life. He, he did all these things. And then he said, you're going to do the same works. But he said, you're going to even do greater things because I go back to my father. So you can't allow Satan to, to diminish these things um, in your in your mindset you are excelling but you're going to have to live in the spirit and not by the flesh jesus only did what his father was doing he only said what his father was saying and he he was using um, his life as an example for us we do the same thing the holy spirit is not going to promote you holy spirit is going to promote the father he's going to turn everybody's attention to the Father and to Jesus. You, so you understand, Jesus turned all the attention to the Father. He said, these are these works are my Father's works. They're not even mine. He said, I don't even uh, speak on my own. He said, I'm just speaking what the Father is saying to, to, to tell you. He said, I've shared everything with you as friends. So the Holy Spirit's doing that right now. I can, I can just sense the power of God so strongly. This is very exciting even though it's a morning session you've got to realize that god it can move by his spirit no matter what time it is so just just grab a hold of the fire right now the lord is imparting heaven you're never going to be the same i have been assured of this i wouldn't do this i wouldn't give up this weekend uh, to do this unless i knew that it was going to succeed god is with you in a mighty way okay romans if you could turn to romans chapter 8 verse 13 and 14 i'm going to read that It says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the the deeds of the body, you will live for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Okay, so Paul said that there is a walk in the Spirit. He said that those who walk in the Spirit are sons of God. He said, but if you fulfill the lust of the flesh, you will reap death. Okay, now this is New Testament, this is Romans letter, this is a letter to Christians. He's saying that you can reap death if you fulfill the lust of the flesh. So those who walk in the flesh, it says in Romans 8.8 8, that you cannot please God. Okay, this is to Christians. So that means that we cannot please God if we walk in the flesh. But if we walk in the Spirit, we fulfill God's heart. We are called sons of God. We are true sons and daughters of God when we walk in the Spirit. We please God. Now remember also, um, with that with that being said, this is that is how we do warfare, is we yield to the Spirit. Okay, also another way that we yield to the spirit is in our mind. And this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses four through six. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience, um, into the captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. 
Okay, so here we are. Your perception is changing because this is real warfare. It has to do with your perception. It has to do with discernment. It's knowing that there are certain things that are going to exalt themselves above what God has already revealed in, in his knowledge. So if you hear or see something that is not what God has already shown in his word, then you need to label that and pull it down. So your perception should be on the word of God. Your perception is framed by the truth, absolute truth. Okay, your perception is, is this. If God is for you, who can be against you? That's your perception. So in your mind, you say, well, you know, God's for me, so no one can be against me because God's for me. God's bigger than anything. So you start to change and shift your perception. Also, understand this, another change. This is warfare. This is how you do spiritual warfare. You understand that if you yield to the flesh, you're going in the wrong direction. And that you will find yourself fighting yourself. So you're going to go against your own own desires. So you want to walk with God? Well, then you can't feed the flesh. You can't let the flesh take you in another direction. The war is not carnal. It's mighty through God. So you pull down perceptions and you don't yield to the flesh. You don't let it come into the physical. And, and, and how you do that is you say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and you live an upright life in Christ Jesus. It's just that simple. This is your warfare. Uh, you know that you're going to pull down strongholds that, that, that have exalted themselves above God's knowledge. Okay, bring in the thought, every thought into captivity. So that's what you do. You, you, you arrest it, you handcuff it, and you say you're going to be obedient to Christ. That's what Paul's saying here. So this is how the enemy works. So we want to, to, to uh, take our stand. We want to put our foot down and say, you know what? I'm not going to be dragged away by my own carnal desires. I can win against this. I'm not going to allow these evil spirits to tempt me, to pull me away. I'm not going to allow myself to harm. I'm going to stay in the spirit. So Satan wants us to question God all the time. He wants us to start like having all these controversies, but see, you just, you just don't even let him talk to you. You just say, you know what? That's ridiculous. Everyone, everyone, um, needs to be baptized in holy fire. Everyone does. Every person must be baptized so that you can experience the cleansing power of God. And with that, you get free. You're free to serve God. You won't have these desires to pull away. Once the fire gets to it, it destroys that. It destroys those things inside of you. And it causes you to walk right. It causes you to walk right because your perception changes. Okay, so um, Jesus said this, and this is something to remember. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is in John 14, verse 6. Okay, so the religious leaders, they were saying that there are many ways to God. You know, there was the religious leaders that say, oh, you know, the other religions, they have that good, good, good and bad. You know, there's, there's major religions now that say there's, there, there are many ways to God, but this is not true. Jesus Christ is the center. He is the gate. He's the door to the Father. There's no way you can come anywhere else. So, so be encouraged by the truth. Let the, tr the truth be predominant in your life. And then what happens is the truth has a cleansing effect on you because the word of God is the washing of the water of the word, as, a, as the scripture says. So you are set apart by the word of God, the word of God being spoken, being uh, meditated on. Um, you know, when you, you quote the word of God, it's very powerful because you're speaking the truth. You're speaking the foundation of what you believe. But also, in heaven right now, there is sapphire. There's a sapphire floor that's very holy and it's got white flames coming out. I saw all this. Okay. That is there right now, but it's connected in your spirit to you by what you believe and what you say right now. So it, to me, it's a reality. It doesn't, I don't have to see the blue fire, the blue sapphire, anything. I don't have to see any of that physically. I know spiritually it exists. And the spirit realm is actually more real than the physical realm. 
And we just become so accustomed to living down here in this physical realm that we forget that the better realm, the higher realm, is the spirit realm. So Jesus didn't come to the earth just just to, to save you so that you don't have to go to hell. He, he did that. He did that for everybody. Okay, so what else did he do? Well, he's seated at the right hand of God. He's, he has bought back all the benefits of being in relationship with the Father yourself. If you read John 17, which is hardly ever read uh, by most people, but if you understand what's being said there by Jesus, we essentially have the same relationship that Jesus had. He said, oh, you're one with the Father now, just as I was one with him. You, He loves you just as much as he loves me. The glory that that we shared, you're going to share with us too as well. So I realized that God, that, that Jesus was sent back not just to prevent people from going to hell. He was sent back so that we could walk in fellowship with our Heavenly Father and that we could not only enjoy the benefits of being a child, but that we can drive out devils, that we could heal the sick, that we could raise the dead, preach the gospel, see people saved and healed, delivered, that we could be a blessing to people around us and that we can change our generation. We can cause the generation to get back on track. So the potential for all this is there, but, but I saw in heaven that a lot of people don't take advantage of this, that they are either just down here surviving until Jesus comes or else they pass away or, um, you know, they, they, they don't have, uh, they don't have the ability to do what they have, they, they have in their heart. They feel like, you know, God, God has not moved on their behalf. And they're waiting on God when God is saying, listen, I have moved on your behalf and I'm waiting on you. You are supposed to change your generation. You're, you're the shift. And how we do that is creating an environment and home, first of all, with holy fire, where we allow uh, the holy fire to, to come upon us and cleanse us. We, we submit to the fire. Now, you don't have to go through terrible things to learn from God. I mean, you know, people, they say, well, you know, God's teaching me something. Well, you know, he could just tell you by the word of God and you could believe it. And then that causes you to change because the word of God is incorruptible. It's going to change you. You don't have to go through hard things to, to learn from God. Now it ends up that a lot of people have to go through this type of discipline because they're just not getting it. And we're all hard headed. We all uh, think we know better then God has to get it through to us. But, you know, I'm just telling you, when I was with Jesus, I saw that his perfect will was for us to read the word of God, agree with it, believe it, let the Holy Spirit implement it and start to manifest it in our lives. That is the perfect will of God. We shouldn't have to find out there's a wall there. Jesus should be able to tell us, hey, there's a wall there. Don't walk into it. And we, okay, thank you. And, and avoid it. But people, they don't believe and they, they, for whatever reason, they don't listen, and so they have to find out the hard way. Well, this is not God's perfect will for us to find out the hard way. So we start to create this environment on our own. We allow God to, to come in and fellowship with us, and we, the Holy Fire starts to cleanse and work out these things. Then we have prayer and dedication. We pray and we dedicate our lives to the Lord. We're consistent every day. How much time do you spend with the Lord? You know, um, is there a way for you to give the Lord at least 10 minutes of, of time where you meditate and you pray? You know, every, every Christian, you know, every Christian should spend more time with God than they do. I, I understand that we've all got responsibilities. However, you know, you're talking to somebody that, that worked at a career for 30 years and also, um, did other things on the side, worked at a church. Um, I got all my, my pilot ratings. I, I did things on the side. I was taking Bible courses. I got my doctorate degree. I got, I worked on things all the time and I was full time, uh, employment as well. And I still had time to pray three, three hours a day. And you, you, you figure out how, how that's done. I don't know how it's done, but I know I did it. I know that, um, I, I made it a lifestyle, but I created that environment so that it became the normal 
for me. Okay, once you're consistent, it will turn into an hour from 10 minutes. And then it could get to where it's three hours. If you want to be in the ministry and, and see people's lives change, you got to do more than 10 minutes a day. You got to get into the hour to be a normal Christian. I believe you have to spend an hour. You know, to, to me, that, that would be just the bare minimum as a Christian. Now, three hours would cause you to, to shift other people's atmospheres. And this is, of course, just my opinion. But I, I know what I'm talking about because I saw what it takes to beat up the devil down here. These these evil spirits, they they are very persistent, and they're more persistent than most people are because um, we're supposed to be ruling and reigning. We're not, so it ends up that these these devils they're more persistent and uh, than than humans are, and this has got to change. Well, in order to do that, we've got to spend more time in spiritual matters. And, and less time just doing all the, the physical and the mental exercises. We need to put our foot down and tell the demons, you know what, enough's enough. And you start being rough with them. You start mouthing off to them, just like they've been mouthing off to you for years. Uh, it's time to flip it on the devil. You put your foot down, you use your authority, and the Lord will start to bless you. Remember, remember this, the Word of God is effective. What you reap is what you've sown. If you don't sow the right thing, you're not going to reap the right thing. That's the way it is. Okay, so God's God is not mocked. A man will reap what he sows. So whatever you've put in the ground, that's what's going to come up. So you should be sowing into your spiritual life. You should be sowing into the environment of heaven and the fire will come in and start to consume anything that is not of the Lord. This is this is your the will of God for your life. Okay, so in the parable of the sower, you know, you have the seed that is sown, which is the word of God, right? And it's sown into your soil. So there were four soils, as you know, and only one produced out of the four. And there was some 30, 60, and 100 full return. Okay, one seed, if you take a, a, a stalk of wheat and you take just one seed out of that and you plant it, that seed comes up with eight heads on it and each head has 40 seeds so one little seed of wheat sown into the soil when it comes up it, it creates a stalk that has eight heads of wheat on it and out of the eight, eight heads each of them has 40 seeds well that's 320 seeds that come from your first harvest then if you plant those and you put all that into the ground you can see how very quickly it's going to turn into fields and fields of wheat. Uh, and so the word of God is going to turn into a manifestation in your life very quickly. So by the third year of doing this, you know, it's going to be exponential to the point where, uh, you know, people won't even know who you are anymore because you'll, you'll be able to do more for God than, than anyone can explain. That is because the parable of the sower is the key. That's what Jesus said. If you understand this parable, you understand the deep mysteries of the kingdom. Well, when he said that, I, it got my attention. This is in Luke chapter 8 and uh, verse 11. The, it talks about the seed is the word of God. And, and uh, everything that goes on in your life is because of something that you've planted. Everything that you have to uh, take, take dominion by planting the Word of God in your life. You have to shift your environment and start with 10 minutes a day. Okay, this, this happened to me when I was doing this, and I've done it for years of meditating on the Word of God. I had the glory, the glory of the, it was a tangible glory would come in to the office where, where I was, was praying. And one day it came in so strongly that my eyes, I could feel that my eyes got healed. And I, when I went to the optometrist, uh, you know, they, they said my eyes have reversed and now I don't need to wear my contacts anymore. And they said they've never seen this happen before. And I'm, and I'm almost 60 years old. And this, this uh, happened to me just a couple years ago. So now I don't have my contacts in. I don't wear glasses anymore. I can see fine without any corrective lenses. And this was because the glory of, of God came in and my, and my environment was invaded 
by the glory of God and, the, and, the, and I was healed without anybody but him touching me. So if you look at the billions of seeds that are going to come from your harvest of just sowing uh, the word of God 10 minutes a day and praying and then watering it by prayer. And then you, you go to the next year and the next year, by the third year, it's in the billions. Um, it's amazing. The body of Christ needs to get into overthrow, not just overcoming, but overthrow to where you have this huge harvest from the word of God. You have the holy fire is burning out everything that's not of, of him. And that supernatural things are going to start happening in your life. It's impossible. God cannot be mocked. Now, listen, what, what are you waiting for? This is the time to do this. You know, um, you are being protected. You're being watched over by God, but he wants more for you than what you're encountering. And it has to do with the crucified life. It has to do with submitting to God, resisting the devil, and he flees from you. It has to do with allowing the holy fire to come in and burn up anything that's, that's not right. The devil doesn't want anyone to hear this message because he knows that he cannot in any way influence a Christian who's walking in holy fire. He cannot Get out of time, but there's a, there's an impartation from heaven right now for holy fire, and there there's the demons don't want this being preached. You wouldn't believe the, the things that have happened all over the world because I chose to speak this message, and the devil uh, shut down the power, shut down um, uh, the services. It, it's just hilarious how desperate the enemy gets when you start talking about the very thing that will stop him. We need to, as the body of Christ, rise up and be the voice to this generation. We need to be the manifestation of God's love in this generation. We need to teach people how to shift their atmosphere, their perception, their vantage point, where they stand, where they see, what they hear. We need to do that. The old things have passed away because you're a Christian now. You're a new species in Christ. You're a new creature. Holy fire is part of the cleansing process that causes your relationship with God to increase, not your position. Your position is sealed by the blood of Jesus. It's so important. And unfortunately, it's this message is being neglected. Okay, so, um, getting also my my eyes were, were healed, my kidneys have been healed, my liver's been healed. Um, there's all kinds of different things going on in my body where I'm seeing healing coming. Um, John 5 verse 19 says this then jesus answered and said to them most assuredly i say to you that the son can do nothing by himself but what he sees his father do for whatever he does the son does in like manner and and so i want to ask you this you know as as a son and a daughter of god um you you want to do the will of god you want to imitate your father but the the word of god is true so the father is healed he wants his children to be healed. Um, your father, God, is wealthy. He has no needs whatsoever. He wants you to inherit all things. He wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to be a distribution center. He wants you to help the poor. He wants you to help people in need. He, he wants you to have the money, but he has to trust you. That's why it's hard for a rich man to get to heaven is because they cannot be trusted with great riches. Most people cannot handle great riches because it gets the best of them. They start to focus on that. And God is not going to share his glory with anybody. He, he's not going to give you something that is going to take you away from him. And so most people don't pass their money test. But if you're willing to just let it go as it comes to you and, and distribute it, be a distribution center, then God can can um, trust you. He, he's going to do that. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit just uh, to, to help you, just for you and to help you. And, and uh, you know, you're not supposed to be holed up. You're supposed to be out and about talking about Jesus, uh, you know, ministering to people. So the Holy Spirit is is manifesting the gifts of the spirit it's manifesting the works of jesus it's uh manifesting you know all the all the fruits of the spirit uh these these this is not to be hidden so with fire fire is not to be controlled fire is 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 uh burning up the chaff in your life you should you should submit you should yield to the fire okay so these these works that jesus did that are are, are the father's works 
are going to be made manifest through us now. Jesus said they're going to even be greater. We're, we're to be partakers of the divine nature. Did you know that? Jesus showed me this. It's in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. It says, By which we have been given great and exceeding precious promises that through these we can be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Wow, this is that that is an amazing statement. When I saw that that the that the Bible says this, I, I thought, man, I haven't been taught this. Who's teaching this kind of thing? God has given us certain things in the Bible, and He doesn't always explain them to us. He just presents them to us. Sometimes He doesn't explain everything in depth. But I don't have to know everything about healing to get healed. I mean, I don't know everything about healing, and I've been healed a number of times. So you don't you don't have to understand healing to be healed right now. It, it's 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 the same thing with everything else. God doesn't explain everything to you right right off the bat, but through progressive revelation of the Spirit of God, you become like a treasure hunter. You start to seek out the Word of God, and God, through His Holy Spirit, starts revealing truth. We have to study the Word of God. That's it in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Okay, so you hook yourself up with God's plans and His purposes, and you cannot fail. God is not going to set you up for failure. He's going to set you up to succeed. So these precious promises that have been given to us that Peter talks about are, are causing us to triumph to the place where we are partakers. We participate in the divine nature. Did you know that? I mean, that we are, we are partakers of the divine nature of God. And because of that, God's destiny, His purpose, plans for us succeed, but they also they they also cause us to escape the uh, corruption that's in the world caused by lust. This this is what it says in Second Peter chapter Second uh, Peter. Uh, this is chapter one, but it's verses verses um, one. Excuse me. It'd be it be uh, chapter one, and then. Verse 5 through 11, it says this, In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises and supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patience endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more that you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Peter goes on to say this, but those who fail to develop in this way, they are short-sighted, blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. He's talking about Christians here. So Peter says this, so, brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those that God has called and chosen. He says this right here. He says, do these things and you will never fail. You will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here you have it. I mean, this is what I saw. In heaven. This is what alarmed me. When I saw this, I saw that we were not doing everything that we were supposed to be doing. And it was because of a lack of understanding. We didn't have the revelation that the Spirit wanted to give us, but it was here in Peter the whole time. He wants us to create an environment uh, that is safe by letting the Spirit and the Word come together in a time where we go from 10 minutes to an hour, and then eventually three hours a day, and we start to add to our faith, to our provision. We add these things, and when we get to that place where we have, have come into overthrow, it says that then you will never fall away. You'll never fail. That is an amazing thing. So this morning, what is it that's troubling you? Maybe you just need to start to add to your faith 
and respond to God's promises by supplementing your faith with all these other things that are listed here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. Um, Peter says to do these things diligently. He said, they're going to keep you from falling. John chapter 1, verse 12 in the Passion Translation, uh, in John 1, 12, it says, But those who embraced him and took hold of his name were given authority to become the children of God. So J Jesus gave us authority, but he gave us the ability to become children of God, to be a sons of God. So this is why, why, it, why we have to understand there's two types of power. You know, he gave us the power to become sons of God, but that word there is the word that's used for authority. So it's not just a, a, a power that, um, that, that is, uh, you know, a brute strength. It has to do with a police officer who says, this is what you're going to do and you have to obey him. This is what the word that's used there. He's given us authority to walk as sons of God. Now, now if we don't stop something, it's going to keep on going is what I'm trying to say is we need to take charge. We need to take dominion. We need to walk in fire and we need to start to see it transfer out away from us into our environment and start changing our environment to where we influence the other the other side of us. No, it's not just us all the time. It's the other side of us. It's not me, myself, and I. It's all the people around you. It's your country. It's your generation. It creates a, a mark in history. If you yield to the Spirit, everyone will change history. Okay, so, so I want to emphasize this. Fire is very purifying. It's from heaven. And in heaven, there's lots of fire. There's, there's, there's fire everywhere. I saw God is full of light. He's full of fire. He is, he's got all these different higher, higher, uh, realms and higher, uh, standards than on the earth. And I saw that because people don't spend enough time, uh, in, in spiritual activity, they they never excel in these things we're talking about that we just talked about in Peter. So, like, like, uh, why would you repent for your sins if you're already forgiven for your sins of your past? So if your past is gone, if you repented and you're born again, then you're a new creature in Christ. The old has passed away. So why would you do anything to make God uh, love you more or, or treat you better if it's already resolved? Okay, that's positional. But relational is, is that when we, we yield to the spirit and we yield to the fire we not we don't concentrate anymore on being forgiven of our past sins the gospel is real it's everything that we've need that we've ever needed it's taken care of that holy fire takes us past that it's a baptism that takes us into a strong relationship so so that's that's what's happening to you right now you're starting to see that the fire of god is cleansing you so that you can be free. And when you're free, you can be who you really are. You don't have to, you don't have to feel like you have to convince people of who you are. You know, this, that's a snare is, is, is to try to get approval from men is a snare. It's in Psalms 107 verse two, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So if you've been redeemed, if you are set free, then you just say so and let the redeemed of the Lord just rejoice and say so. I'm, I'm free. I don't feel sorry for the devil. I don't feel sorry for, for, uh, these evil spirits that are, that they're, they're completely unredeemable. They, they have lost their ability to repent. And, and now they're my enemy. I drive them out. I'm not, I'm not going to, to allow them to manifest in any way. I'm going to keep pushing them back. Um, uh, there's, there's all kinds of things like the seven things that God hates in Proverbs chapter six, verse 16 through 19. There's seven things that God hates. You know, he, he hates sin. He hates people that backbite. And you can go through all those different things that God hates. I mean, well, then you've got to hate those things too. And he hates the devil. He hates his enemies. He has no mercy on his enemies. So you've got to hate the devil. You've got to hate everything about him. And you need to, as a leader, you need to, to be an example to those under you. That is, is that you can't be afraid of the devil. You can't compromise. You've got 
to enforce the blessing, not the curse. Don't let the devils manifest. So remember that, that there is no life in hell. There is no, no life down there. The life of God is in the throne room. It came t- down from heaven in the form of Jesus Christ. He was the life. He was the light of men. He manifested himself, walked amongst us, and then he went back and sat at the right hand of God. Now we are also seated with him in the heavenly realms. We are also to walk in this power. Don't hold back. Jesus didn't hold back. And so I'm telling you, I was sent back and to tell people this, you cannot hold back. So, so um, that was the end of chapter one. I'm going to go into chapter two or finish up chapter two here uh, during this morning session. Then you know you will be coming back at two uh, p.m. for the next session, and we'll just pick up right there. I want to talk to you about Psalm 66, verse 10, and this is chapter two called the purifying process. And this is what it says in the Passion Translation: "Oh Lord, we have." pass through the fire like precious metal made pure you've proved us perfected us and made us holy so there you have it there's the purifying fire that we're talking about i'm going to read that again because it's so good lord we have passed through your fire like precious metal made pure you've proved us perfected us and made us holy you see i want to be proven I want to be approved by God. This is not a positional thing. This is a relational thing. Uh, positionally, like I said, you know, this is, this is the, uh, the blood of Jesus has made us righteous. The blood of Jesus has made us holy. I'm not talking about purchasing us uh, and um, causing us to have no past, that we're all forgiven. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about here in this is that we have a relationship with God as well. And in that relationship with God, I can go further than I could positionally. You know, what I mean by that is, is that Enoch walked with God to the point where he was not. Now, what, what, what happened there? Enoch pleased God so much that God took him. Okay. Well, why didn't he take everyone else? I mean, they all just lived out their life and, and, and went on to be with him, or they went to hell if they were not walking with God. But why did this happen with Enoch? It's because Enoch walked with faith. He believed that God exists and that he was a rewarder uh, of those who diligently seek him. He he was a believer in that. Because of that, he excelled beyond just position with God. He had a relationship with God. He pleased God. That word there is more of a relational you know, and I, I think that, um, I think that, that if you understand the fire of God and if you understand what Enoch went through, Enoch was a prophet and he was living at a, in a time where the, the, the human beings on the earth were interbreeding. They, there was all kinds of terrible things happening on the earth. A lot of these men didn't have what we have today, but yet they excelled in their relationship with God. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 says this, Never restrain or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. So we're not to ever, ever in any way quench the fire of God. We're to yield to the fire of God. And I know that this is, this is the thing that, that many of the people that, that were used of God throughout the, all the generations that I've studied, they all had this element in their life. They all allowed the Holy Spirit to burn and they had a passion for God. Never put it out, never quench it. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, it says, in the Passion Translation, it says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into flame and rekindle the fire of the, of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid hands upon you. So he's talking about the fire, uh, and it's referring to spiritual gifts. So God imparted a spiritual gift to Timothy by the laying hands of Paul on, on him. And he's saying, fan or blow on the, on the coals and fan it into flame again. So obviously it had gone out and we, we have this happen to us. You know, we, we have a move of God. We have somebody lay hands on us. We go to a meeting. It was amazing. But then when you're on your own and you have to go back to work and you have to go back to your situations with your family, you know, all your relationships with, with uh, your bills needing paid, you, you get into this uh, 
this time uh, where you're discouraged because uh, it was so real. God was so real when he moved in the, on your behalf in whatever way it was. Well, Paul telling Timothy, you got a fan in the flame and cause, cause what is now just a glowing ember to become flame again. You have to be passionate. You, you have to experience the fire. And, and uh, this fire is vital, he's, he's saying, to your life and your spiritual gifting. Okay, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, it says, For our God is a holy, devouring fire. So fire is essential for your life. God is that holy flame of fire. He's a devouring fire, according to Hebrews. We should keep this scripture in mind all the time. We should allow God to, to have his way in cleansing us. So we do not want to do anything. So be, be very diligent not to do anything to quench this fire. Once it's kindled in you by watching these videos, the impartation is off the charts. If you could feel what I'm feeling uh, last night and this morning, it, the fire of God is so strong, it's imparted to you. It's there. Don't let it diminish by, by quenching it. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Do that continually. That's what Paul told the Romans in chapter 12. Verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so in heaven, there's, an, there's, a, there's a fire and there's an altar. And, and on the earth, we are to create these altars and we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices. We don't, we don't kill ourselves. We, we just lay ourselves on there. We offer our bodies as, as a spiritual worship. This is, this is God uh, telling us right now that we're to yield to the holy fire. We're to allow the fire of God. The demons are disabled. I don't know if you're getting this, but you cannot see, you cannot, um, you cannot believe. I mean, I, I want you to believe. But if you saw what I saw, the demons cannot operate in holy fire. They're completely disabled. They're compromised. They, they are unholy. They're, they're wicked. They're unclean. They're unholy. And when you walk in the fire of the Holy Spirit, when you uh, have experience the holiness from the altar of God, you offer your body as a living sacrifice, the demons cannot come near you because they, they are judged by the fire. That, I don't know if you understand this. They don't want to encounter the fire because it's torment to them. That's why they asked Jesus, I've become the torment us before our time. You know, that's what the demons would say to Jesus. And he would just cast them out. But he didn't send them away to the pit because it wasn't their time yet. Now, they're going to rule, uh, rule over the, the world because the spirit of this world is ruling over the people that are unredeemed. If it, if the, if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're not taking your authority, um, if you're not uh, a born again spirit filled Christian, you know, then then um, you're fighting you're fighting without any power. You know, the, the the devil is running over the people of the world right now. Paul said they have no resistance to the spirit of this world, and um, he said that you were among those those people, but now you're a part of the body of Christ. And God loves to see flesh just go on the altar and just turn yourself in. If you're having trouble with your flesh, if you're ha having um, habits that need broken. The power of the Holy Spirit is so strong right now. I just break every addiction. I break every every kind of, of blind devil, whatever it is that is bothering you. I break the power of the devil. Many, many people are experiencing freedom right now. I break that power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So this, when you put your body on, on the altar, the demons cannot touch you because you've given your body over to God. You've offered it up and the holy fire just starts to burn on that altar. And it's your worship. It's, it's, you, you can discern that says there in the latter part of Romans 12, it's uh, of 12, two and three. It says that when it says, if you do this, you will be able to discern what the good, acceptable and perfect will of God is for your life. Well, you know, I, every Christian I know wants to know what God's will is for their life. 
well, here's how you do it. It's just not being taught. You can hear and see from God in a greater manner if you offer your body up on the altar as a, as a living sacrifice that you crucify the flesh and the voice of the flesh will diminish then and you'll be able to hear God in a greater manner. You're getting, you're getting rid of all the things that hinder you, the chaff and um, the draw, the draws, everything that is impure. Uh, the Holy Fire will cleanse that out from you as we've been talking about in this session. Paul said this. He had such a, a beautiful revelation of this. He counted himself as dead. He said that, that Christ is living in me. He said, it is no longer I that live, but it is Christ living in me. This is in Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 20. So this, this, uh, this is what Jesus said too. He said, if you want to gain your life, you have to lose it. I mean, you. This is not being preached like it should be. This is this is going to help a lot of people because Jesus knew the warfare that it, that was going to happen down here. This is in Matthew sixteen twenty five. By the way, make sure you take notes and and go over all these. Um, and this will eventually be a study guide coming out soon, and and also a book and uh, a daily devotional. And we've got plenty of different things that we're offering. Uh, during this weekend. So make sure you take advantage of, of the offers. I've, I've knocked 75% off of some of the courses for you this weekend. I've also um, given you discounts with um, Holy Fire download um, that, and an impartation CD to support and, and reinforce everything that I've said this weekend. I've given uh, you a, a huge discount on that impartation CD as well as a download. Uh, so uh, I want to get into this the idea about um, these feel-good messages that really cause people to be lukewarm. Um, I'm not going to uh, specifically mention any people's names. I'm not going to uh, criticize any individual. What I'm telling you is, is that we've got to keep the, the gospel message pure and unadulterated because behind the scenes, I saw that these evil spirits were influencing ministers to back off and to compromise so that people didn't actually get the full power of the truth that was being preached by Jesus and by the apostles. I saw that, that the message has been diminished, but it's been diminished because evil spirits did not want people to walk in the fullness of the gospel. So we can't have people uh, around us that are going to cause us to compromise. You've got to preach the, the, the unadulterated word of God, incorruptible word of God. You've got to be a good example and, and demonstrate the power of God, the resurrection power where people are raised from the dead and people are healed. That's what we go after. We go after the word of God and the spirit of God. We seek after God. The word of God is Jesus and we seek after the spirit of God. These are people. These are persons. They are part of the Holy Trinity. They are powerful beings. They are God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Father is God, Jehovah. He is great and mighty. Those three together are unbeatable. However, we can diminish by backing off because we are his ambassadors on the earth. This, this, with, this, this has to be said. Please do not back off of this message. Do not back off of the gospel because then the people that are, that are being influenced by your message, they're going to get a watered down version and the devils are going to be able to beat them up. And I don't want that. I, that's not why I came back. I came back to, to be fully committed, just like Jesus tried to get the crowds. Do you remember the time it, it's in John um, 653? He said, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no part of me. He was, uh, seeing that the people were following him around because they saw the miracles and because they were fed. And he, he said, listen, from now on, if you don't drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no part of me. And he said, it said that many people left him that day. They all did. And then even the disciples were asked by Jesus, are you going to leave me as well? And they said, no, you have the words of life. They were showing their commitment toward him, but the crowds, they, they did not have the commitment. And it's because the people didn't realize what it was 
that Jesus was trying to tell them that they, they, they have to leave everything to follow Jesus. They had to leave everything. That's why he, he lost the uh, rich young ruler because he, he had great wealth. He depended on that wealth. He didn't want to give that up. But see, Jesus would have given him everything. All right. We have to discern the body of Christ as well, because Jesus was talking about the communion table when he was talking about eating flesh and drinking blood. He was talking about the bread and the, and the, and the, the wine. He was talking about the symbolism of, of the communion uh, table. And we need to discern the body of Christ. We need to discern how powerful the blood of Jesus is and how powerful the bread of the word of God, the bread of life, that we must partake of that and allow that to change us. Um, I don't need any kind of man's approval. Uh, you know, I got to have God's approval, first of all. But you understand that even if I, uh, even if uh, I walk in complete obedience to God and walk in the fire, a total commitment to the blood and the body of Jesus, you realize I'm not going to please everybody. And so you're not either. And this day, well, there's a great falling away. But see, people don't even realize that it's happening. But I see it. I, I see that there are people that are going to be spewed out of God's mouth because they're lukewarm. I mean, it's already happening. But we need to walk in a uh, fire of God because we need to walk in our destiny. Our destiny is on the other side of fire. We have to walk through the fire and be qualified. We have to, to uh, be purified. Um, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 through 46 says this. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy oh, over it, he goes and he sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. So Jesus was talking about somebody who was very wise and had found this pearl. And so he went and sold everything to buy it. This is uh, considered by Jesus being a very wise person. This is you. This is you and I. We found it. We found the gospel. We found the, the message. We found the person, Jesus. We found the Father through Jesus. We, we have the Holy Spirit and fire through Jesus' uh, work on the earth and on the cross. And what he's doing now in heaven, he is at the right hand of God interceding for us. Right now, he is telling us to go sell everything to buy the pearl of great price, leave everything. And so that's what we have done. We have left everything. We have walked away from sin. We have walked away from the world's approval. We don't listen to the spirit of the world anymore. We don't listen to the flesh. We don't let uh, the, these evil spirits convince us in our mind. Uh, of something that's not true. We do spiritual warfare. We come against everything that lifts itself up above that knowledge of God. All right. Um, this, this causes the, the, everything to flip. So what's going to happen next is you're going into overthrow where the tables have been turned on your enemy. Now the enemy is your victim is he's the victim and you are enforcing a blessing. You are enforcing what Jesus Christ did already. He defeated the devil. He made a show of him openly. And now you, you are to do the same thing. You are to make a show of him. You are to enforce the blessing and, and release yourself from any responsibility that to the world because you're, you're not going to compromise anymore. You don't have to. God's going to bless you because you've left everything to follow him. He's going to favor you. This is what I'm talking about. It's a relationship. This is a purifying uh, process that causes your relationship to go into overthrow. And with that overthrow, there are benefits. You have favor. So the Lord can navigate you through this life. Don't ever doubt that. He represented the Father. The Father loves you uh, personally. And now He wants you to be navigated through this life. And you can, you can win. You can, just like Peter said, you can add these things to your faith and never fail. So you're supposed to do the works of Jesus. And, and you're supposed to uh, allow God to enforce what He 
did through Jesus Christ now was he made a show of the devil openly. And that's in Colossians 2.15. So you flip it right now by prophesying to your world, prophesying over yourself, speaking by the Spirit and saying, you know what? We're going to flip it. We're going to flip it right now. Holy fire around me, a wall of fire around me, and then no devil can touch me. You just start prophesying. You know, I'm full of fire right now. You know, you say, um, you know, the, everything that's not of God around me is burning up. Any relationships, um, any, anything that's in my life, anything that's around me is, it's burning up right now by the fire, fire of God. I'm going to, ca you cast out devils. You just drive devils out. Just say, you know what? Leave me alone. I break your power in the name of Jesus. You flip it. You, the Holy, the Holy fire is part of your life. You not only experienced the, the, the Holy Spirit's baptism, you not only experience the born again experience, you are now encountering holy fire. Just like on the day of Pentecost, they had flames of fire on their head. When the, when the Holy Spirit came on that day, he came for you. He, he didn't just come for those people on that day. He came for you. The Holy Spirit is still being poured out. Um, we accept that. We accept the benefits. We accept the fire. No, no. Listen. God pronounced a lot of things, and I, I just want—I would just want to finish with this. There, there are certain things that you have accepted in your life that are not not true. I'll give you one example of this. You know, you've accepted if you have financial problems for years and years and years. Your parents had financial problems. Uh, your friends have financial problems. Maybe the company you work for has financial problems. Okay, so you get to this place where you 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 really compromise, even though you don't want to. But you have to start to readjust because things um, are not working out as planned. And we do this to ourselves, but we, we don't lower the bar just because we don't experience the power of God. We continue to be diligent and forced by prophesying to our, our situation and our environment, the word of God. We don't back off. Okay, for instance, in Deuteronomy 15 verses 4 through 6, it says this. Except when there may be no poor among you, for the Lord will greatly bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance. So, so this verse is saying there's going to be no poor among us because the Lord is going to bless you. Only if you're care, only if you carefully obey the voice of God. So you have to obey him, observe with care all his commandments that he's given in this day, for the Lord your God will bless you just as he promised you. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. This is in Deuteronomy 15. Okay, this is Old Testament. Okay, so for example, this was Old Testament, an old covenant, not as good as our new covenant. And yet, God is saying there's not going to be any poor among you. There, there's going to be uh, lending to nations, but they're not going to lend to you. Uh, so Jesus is that better covenant. So something has to flip today, don't you think? Don't, don't you think that that uh, if God has already proclaimed that there's not going to be any poor among Old Testament people in an old covenant, <clears throat> when when is that? When do you start? When do you start to see that you've compromised that you're letting things happen in your life? This is just one example. So God wants to prosper you. What else does he want to do? So I'm just going to pray for you. and We're going to finish up here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your power. I thank you for the baptism of fire right now on the people. I thank you, Lord God, just as you just showed us in Deuteronomy, there are so many things that we've accepted and we've compromised. And now the Holy Fire has come and we're shifting our, our, our perception through the revelation of the Spirit of God. And we're not going to accept these compromises anymore. The Lord, that you want to bless us. You want to help us. You want to heal us. You want us to go on into the greater things. So we just, we just release Holy Fire right now. We allow you to have your way. We offer our bodies up to you right now. Now we submit to the Spirit of God, fire upon the people right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, every demon running in terror right now as a wall of fire starts to proceed forward in everyone's life right now, the impartation of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The curse is broken. Thank you. 
Hey, thanks for joining me. I know you've enjoyed this session because I surely have. The fire of God is present right now. And make sure you come back at 2 Central Time, 2 p.m. Central Time for the afternoon session. God bless you. Many people go through life wishing they could understand the realm of the spirit and the warfare that goes on behind the scenes. In his brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, Dr. Kevin Zadai helps you to develop your ability to engage the enemy on every level. Kevin's brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, will help equip you to learn to recognize God's direction for your life, encounter clarity in knowing God's battle strategies against your enemies, exercise your authority as a believer, walk in increased discernment through the Holy Spirit's power, and much, much more. In this exclusive offer, Kevin also prays impartation prayers on each CD to help you in your advance against the enemy. Order today Kevin's brand new study guide and exclusive three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, for a donation of $29, U.S. shipping and handling included. To order, call 888 888- 340-1460 with offer code 1002 or go online to kevinzadai.com slash offer. It's time to stand up for your rights as a Christian and give the devil a headache.